Good morning, everybody. Praise God for this beautiful day. I ask you today to pray for the repose of Joan Guattari and also for Father Dennis Dempsey. I'll talk about him in my talk after the gospel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Jesus Christ, our Lord, by your coming you perfected the old covenant and inaugurated the new covenant. In your love you betrothed the church of all nations, and by your grace you built her foundation on Peter and the twelve apostles. Now make us worthy on this feast of the consecration and renewal of the church to raise a hymn of praise and thanks to you, to your Father and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory and praise to the wise builder who by his grace and in his divine providence and mercy built the church to be an invincible and secure fortress and a tower of salvation so that those who have been saved by his cross may find refuge in her. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Blessed are you, O Christ. You established the Jerusalem as the Holy Church and promised her to be with her at the end of time, confirming her in holiness, strengthening her foundations on faith, and laying her stones with love, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. Today, as we celebrate the consecration of the renewal of the Church, We cry out, proclaiming, Rise up, O church, for the Savior of the world has made you his dwelling. Rise up and shine, for the Almighty Redeemer has saved you by his victorious cross. Rise up and shine, for the Holy Lord has chosen the saints from among your children. Now, O Lord, we implore you with the fragrance of this incense, to remember the church you have built and protect your flock from evil. Grant rest to our departed in your kingdom and unite us with them in your heavenly glory that we may glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever.
Christ, you are the fragrant prism, and we ask you to accept the fragrance of this incense as a pledge of our gratitude. May the bishops, priests, and deacons who serve at your altars guide the church in your spirit. We glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, forever. sisters, now even the first covenant had regulations for worship and an earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was constructed, the outer one in which the lampstand, the table, and the bread of offering, this is called the holy place, behind the second veil was a tabernacle called the holy of holies, in which there were gold altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant entirely covered with gold. In it were the gold jar containing the manna, the staff of Aaron that had been sprouted, and tablets, the covenant. Above it were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the place of expiation. Now, it is not the time to speak of these in detail. With the arrangements of for worship, the priests, in performing their service, go into the outer tabernacle repeatedly. But the high priest alone goes to the inner one once a year, not without blood that he offers for himself and for the sins of the people. In this way, the Holy Spirit shows that the way to the sanctuary had not yet been revealed. While the outer tabernacle still had its place, this is a symbol of the present time in which gifts and sacrifices are offered that cannot perfect the worshiper in conscience, but only in matters of food and drink and various ritual washings. 
Regulations concerning the flesh imposed until the time of the new order. But when Christ came as the high priest of the good things that have, have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once and for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Peace be with you and with your spirit. from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, the listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle writes this. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Messiah. This is the truth, peace be with you. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, giving us His words of life, praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. Brothers and sisters, it's good to be here again. I like Maine, and uh, so far I like maniacs as well. <laughs> By the way, my, my uh, bachelor's was in um, English literature, and I, I know I'm going to say it anyway. I actually like the writing of Stephen King. <laughs> Anyone who could write that way and scare the Judas out of you is a pretty good writer. <laughs> um, so I'd like to say, I've, I found in preparing over the years for, 
for preaching, sometimes you find a little nugget that really hits the point. And I'll just start my comments today with this. This comes from a well-known teacher of preaching. And he wrote, the purpose of preaching is to stimulate the conversation people are already having with God. Isn't that something? Let me repeat it again. The purpose of preaching is to stimulate the conversation that people are already having with God. So in a sense, my opening gambit this morning is to ask you, as I ask myself every day, what's the, converse, what's the conversation I'm having with God? What are, what are you talking with God about and how are you listening to God? Conversation back and forth. So today we celebrate in the whole Maronite Patriarchate the first Sunday of the liturgical year. It's called the Consecration of the Church. And you know, I've got to tell you, over the years of preaching, I've been preaching for almost 48 years now, um, I am amazed at the wisdom of the people who put together the system of readings that we have. It's called the lectionary. And we begin then the liturgical year in a very, very good way. Two Sundays, sometimes only one Sunday, um, of the church. And it, the wisdom is, I think, that ch our church, our tradition, asks us to think about, as we begin the liturgical year, who and what is church. And uh, I think it's a very important consideration. The church asks us not only to be in the church, but to be church. You get what I'm saying to you? We have to be in the church, but we are church as well. Most effective preaching, I think, often starts with a story. Normally, when I preach, I try to leave people with a good feeling out of the church. Not that, you know, it's not warm fuzzies, but to feel encouraged and to say, I'm glad I'm in the church, and I'm glad I heard the word of God. So I have a little story this morning that's not really, so normally I try to be very positive, but something happened in my own life recently. In fact, a week ago yesterday, um, that really touched me a lot. And that is one of my classmates from the Roman seminary, I went six years to a Roman seminary and then six years to the Maronite seminary, but um, one of my classmates, Father Dennis Dempsey, had worked in uh, Venezuela for a number of years. He was very successful and good and a good and holy man, I think. Then he came back to our hometown. By the way, I'm from Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota. And um, he came back and the archbishop assigned him to a very big parish in Minneapolis. Dennis was a bike rider. He did it all from the days of seminary all the way through Venezuela, and he was riding his bike uh, just almost two weeks ago in Minneapolis. A car came over a very, very busy road, Highway 62, was being driven by a 26-year-old who had nine convicted violations for reckless driving. His license had been revoked. He should not have been on the road. He came around the curve. He crashed headlong into Dennis's bike and killed him instantly. And we mourned that loss very much. Why do I tell you this story? It's because that funeral was a huge funeral. The parish he was assigned to had a church, beautiful church, that could seat 1,800 people. That's a big place, isn't it? Can you compare it to our little church here? It was jam-packed. And there were 40 priests, at least 40 priests, who attended that funeral. Um, they were all Latin Rite. I was the only Eastern Rite priest, but there we are 
symbols of the universality of the church. And between the people there, the number of priests, the archbishop, a very good one, who conducted the liturgy, the choir who was fabul fabulous, it was easy for me to see that this was a kind of, I'm gonna say it, microcosm, okay? It was a kind of symbol for the whole wider church. And that's why I tell you this story today. I've been thinking a lot about church. So here's how I want to wrap up this homily this morning. I want to ask you to do a favor to yourselves and to this congregation. I would like to ask you to think about what it means to be church, the church we're asking God to consecrate this weekend. And I will say to you, there's maybe four levels we could think about. You could do this either way, it could work either way, but I'll start with the universal church. We're taught in these days that the Church of Christ, the Catholic Church of Christ, is made up of many different churches, and we're living witnesses of that, aren't we? There is the biggest one, the Latin Church, but here's the Maronite Church. Some of you may not have, that you may have Melkite friends, or Russian Catholic, etc many churches that make up the communion of church. So that's the biggest level, and all of that communion of churches is governed by the Bishop of Rome, whom these days we know is Pope Francis. The second level is our own leader, and that is our patriarch in Lebanon. We pray for him in every liturgy. Bishop, Archbishop Rai, he's our patriarch. He's the one that governs our own community throughout the world. That's another way of looking at church. The third level is what we call an eparchy. Now, some of you who are new to coming to St. Joseph's may not know that term, but that's the Eastern way of saying diocese. And our eparchy is headed up by our bishop, your bishop. He's not my bishop. I have one from Los Angeles, uh, Bishop Elias. Your bishop is Bishop Greg Mansour. He is the head of the Maronite community of the eparchy of St. Maron of Brooklyn. That's our local eparchial church. Finally, this is the last layer, and this is the one that touches us, us maybe mostly. This is, when people think of church, they tend to think very locally. When you say, what is the church? Well, my church is St. Joseph's in Waterville, you know? That's where we first seem to contact the church in our minds. But, and it's very important. And how wonderful to have our parish here under the protection and guidance of great St. Joseph, whose year we're celebrating. By the way, my last assignment in Western New York that's closer to Buffalo, was also St. Joseph. So he was, you know, this is the local. This is how we see church. This is when we interact. We are with each other on this very local level, but the church is very, very big. And we're, I'm asking you to think about that today. So I want to conclude my homily today. I want to thank you for listening, first of all. Second of all, I just offer a little tiny prayer and you know the response. I'll start with Our Lady first. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for listening.
openly profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Ito wod mada behid alohu awot alohu dam halita yu. We nub soho taibu toh e aulen baitoh wasud baitlo hot kucho. Yamento moyo dabarai muabza. blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus the Messiah and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, our patron, St. Joseph, and her husband. Saint Mary, Saint Charbel, Saint Rafka, Saint Namtal al Hardini, and the Twelve Apostles. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, both living and departed, and especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered this morning, Joan Gattardi, Father Dennis Dempsey. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Amen.
Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another a greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. you, God the Father, for you are holy and giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the angels, the cherubim and seraphim, who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify and proclaim. Yeah. 
Holy is your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit. You are holy, and the giver of all that is good. For our salvation, your only begotten Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan, he saved and redeemed us. <laughs> In Sabil Mobida, Kadishoto, Barehu Kadesh, Waxo, Yabil Talmida, Wakadoma, Sab Ahu Mene Kulhu, Ho no den ita, Fahro di Dahlo Faikun. Wahlo sagi metuk sayu meti heb lahu soyo dhau be walhay dalalam almin. O khano al koso dam zero min hamro min mayo barehu kadesh. Ya bil talmida wa kadoma Sab ishtahu mene kulkhun Ho no den itaha Tumo dil diyati kihdatu Dahlo faikun Wahlo sagiye me te shedu me te heb Lahu soya dhau be walhaye Dalalam almeen Amen. He said, whenever you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. Lord, lover of all people, we remember your plan of salvation, and we ask you to have mercy on your worshipers, to save your inheritance, when you will appear at the end of time to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this, your consecrated church implores you, and through you, and with you, implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God. Have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, where the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. Send us your life-giving Spirit from heaven to hover over this offering and to make it the life-giving body and blood, and to pardon and sanctify us. Anin morio, anin morio, anin morio, unite moru ho chayakadisho, unagen alain wal kurbono hono. Bye. 
his descent, the Spirit may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. Make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, healing of souls and bodies, and strengthening of consciences, so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and lead a pure life. And we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your church, and especially our fathers and shepherds, Francis, Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our own Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith. With blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Charbo, St. Rafka, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured suffering for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Yes, grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Father, through you, to you be glory forever. 
Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom with your only Son, Jesus, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. May peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirits, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Most holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord, our God, to you be glory
again and again. We thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and the glory of your holy name that of your only son and your holy spirit now and forever Amen. may peace be with you and with your spirit Lord Jesus our God and Savior you became flesh for our sake and by sacrificing yourself you saved us Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Before, we, before we disperse this morning, I want, to, first of all, to thank you for participating so well in the liturgy today. What a joy it's been to pray with you. I thank you. Subdeacon Steve for all his help, for the servers as well, for their help, and uh, for the choir. Did a wonderful job this morning in singing the liturgy. May the Lord be praised. I am, um, yeah, I think I have some time to go down to the hall to, to meet with you. So, not sure I'll have a muffin, but uh, I'll talk to you anyway. So, um, God bless you, and we'll see you there. <laughs>